Hey Pro Guides family, my name is Dan and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. Today we're going to talk about some of the best abilities that are currently in the game. Of course, before we get started, we want to ask you our question of the day. What do you think has the most powerful abilities in the game right now? In my opinion, it's definitely Sage. They've nerfed her a couple of times, but still they can't nerf her hard enough. She will probably be a top tier agent for a long time. Either way, maybe you guys have put someone else before her, so make sure to comment down below because we would love to hear your opinion as well. Okay guys, starting at number 10, we have Neural Theft. We're always talking about information and how important it is, but unfortunately, players in lower elo are not relying on it as much since most of the time, I only see aggressive play styles, which aren't always good. You always want to have either Sova or Cypher on your team for that purpose. It depends on the map you're playing and of course, you or your teammate's personal preference. Now we're talking about Cypher's ultimate, Neural Theft. The name speaks for itself. You're stealing the information and getting the exact location of the enemies that are alive. Defending or attacking, it doesn't really matter. You want to use that ultimate whenever you get a chance because it gives you and your team a huge advantage. A common mistake some people make when they're playing Cypher is that they're often saving his ultimate and end up losing the round. It's understandable to save it when you know where the enemies are or when you're in a clutch, but in almost every other situation, you should use it because it's going to help your team win the round. All right, guys, as we mentioned at the beginning, Sage definitely has some of the best abilities in the game, so we just got to talk about him. Barrier Orb is the ability that you need to buy every round, and that's for sure. It can be used in many, many different ways. You can rotate it, stand on it, protect your teammates, guard the site, and even trick your enemies. If you're playing Sage and you're thinking about buying Operator and not your wall, that's a risky move, and in my opinion, a big mistake. In the pistol rounds, many people like buying a Ghost, and that leaves them with only 300 credits, which is not enough for Barrier Orb. That's not really a good thing, especially when you're defending. You can easily prevent the push and buy some time for your teammates to rotate if you know for sure that enemies are committing to the site that you're defending. You can block the entire site without actually having to expose yourself to the enemy. For example, you are on Haven and all you have to do is put your wall on the C site. Pretty easy. It's a big advantage when you're playing defensively, but also when you want to play aggressively, you can wall off the one angle and push the site that you want to take. At number 8, we have another Cypher's ability, Trap Wire. When it comes to playing Cypher, your camera, cages, and trap wires enable you to almost single-handedly defend one site. We decided to put his trap wire at number 8 since we think it's so powerful and people don't really know how to use them properly. Cypher mains probably know all this stuff, but the new players and players that are not that familiar with Cypher should definitely pay attention to this. Cypher's camera is not that hard to use. There are some tricks, but the point is to cover one area or one angle and you can cover something else with your gun. Trap wires may seem easy to use as well, but they are predictable and enemies will expect them in the common places. It's still good to use them that way because even if they destroy one, you'll have at least some sort of information about their position. Using the double trap wire is something you should definitely try out since it catches the enemy off guard almost every time. It's not that hard to use, you just place the first one lower and the other one behind the first one you placed. That way, the enemy will probably try to jump over the first one and get caught in the second, or they'll destroy the first one but probably won't expect the other trap wire. Traps are not only good when you're defending, they can be pretty good when you're attacking as well. For example, let's pretend you're playing bind. If you want to go on the B site with your team, the best trap would probably be somewhere in B link to prevent the enemies from flanking. On the other hand, if you pushed B site, you probably want to use your trap in hookah or at the exit of A teleport. It's the man with a plan, but more importantly, a giant death laser. As we all know, it's Brimstone. He's one of the best agents in the game right now since he has such a good utility. When it comes to protecting the spike, Brimstone can do a lot of things. Not only can he use his ultimate, his molly could do the job as well if he positioned well. But now, since we're talking about his orbital strike, which is obviously a better ability, he can use it in many situations. When you plant the spike with Brim, there's no need for you to be near it. You can just hide it in a good spot and activate orbital strike with the spike in the middle of it when you hear that enemies are defusing. The closer the enemies are to the center of your ultimate, the more damage it will deal. Let's say you're defending and you hear the enemies are planting. You can go ahead and politely suggest that they vacate the area by calling down a death ray on their heads. It is a good option for you to either buy some time and get a good angle to take them out. The same thing applies as with Cypher's ult. Whenever you get a chance to use it, don't be afraid to use it. It's never a waste. It's only a waste if you save it for no reason and never end up actually using it. Coming in at number six, we have Breach's Flashpoint. 
Breach is absolutely one of the best agents, and it's hard to go wrong in picking him. His playstyle is different from the other agents because two of his abilities require walls to activate. As his name says, he's the best at breaching certain areas and taking parts of the map. A good breach is hard to stop, and can even sometimes completely dominate your opponents with them having little to no counterplay. The biggest impact that you can make in every round is using your flashpoint properly. Breach has access to two charges of flashpoint per round, so be sure to keep track of how many Breach is used. Flashpoint is fairly similar to Phoenix's curveball, but better due to its longer lasting flash time and ease of use. Clearing angles and peaking should be easy with Breach. You just be sure to not flash your teammates, or I'm sure they will have some choice words. Alright guys, let's talk about Brimstone's signature ability, Sky Smoke. We already talked about his ultimate, but what about his smokes? Brimstone is ideal for being the dedicated vision blocker since he can use up to three smokes in one round. It's super strong for executing and going for a certain site. The reason why they are so powerful is because of their versatility and playmaking capabilities. For example, you want to go to the A site on Split. Using smokes on A Heaven, screens and A Ramp will help you a lot since you can now easily head onto site and plant the spike. Brimstone is also super powerful on the defensive side. You can always use smokes and try to slow the enemies. If you're defending a site on Haven, and with Brimstone you probably do want to defend that site, and you hear the enemies approaching, using two smokes on a ramp and a short at choke points will force them to walk through the big cloud of dust which isn't really great if you like to play the video game instead of spectating someone else. You can always potentially spam smoke one side over and over again so the attackers will be scared to push through it. All in all, one of the best abilities you can use every single round and up to three times. Super powerful on the defense and offense as well. If you want to learn some more awesome brimstone tricks or really tips and tricks for any agent, be sure to check out ProGuys.com where we are offering on-demand coaching. Learn from the best so you don't die like the rest. If coaching isn't your speed, fear not as we also have our ProGuys Valorant Discord. Join with the link in the description for a ton of free events and Q&A sessions with some of our highest ranked coaches. Now, Breach's ultimate, Rolling Thunder, is very similar to his signature ability, Fault Line. When you're ready to use his ultimate, you will see the big red area on the minimap your ultimate will affect. Since it is huge, enemies will have a hard time dodging it, and after you use it during a push, you and your teammates will have an easy job just cleaning house. If your ultimate hits the enemy, it's gonna knock them up, stun them, and it's gonna daze them just like the Fault Line, but for much longer. Of course, like all of his abilities, Rolling Thunder can be casted through walls as well, and that's what makes it so powerful. You can easily follow it after it's been used, and it shouldn't be hard for you to kill the enemies that were hit by it. Even if they manage to dodge it, you still clear the area and take map control for you and your teammates to approach the site and plant the spike. This ultimate plays into the rest of his kit of being able to do some broken things through walls with little chance to respond. That should be enough for when you're attacking, but what about when you're defending a site? Well, maybe Breach isn't perfect for defending, but he can still do a pretty good job by slowing down enemies and buying some time for the teammates to rotate. His Rolling Thunder can completely stop an enemy push, and he can even pick up some cheeky kills if you want to play aggressive after using Rolling Thunder. Sova is definitely one of the highest skill agents currently in the game. He's a good initiator because of his scouting abilities, and he has the perfect potential of gathering information about the enemies for his team. His signature ability, Recon Bolt, does this best. Even though you only get one charge at the beginning, it is a 32 second cooldown so you can use it more than once in a round. With additional controls on the ability like adding additional bounces and altering the speed of the projectile, it can take some time getting used to controlling it to land exactly where you want. By bouncing the bolt to stick to a wall or a player even, you can easily reveal the position of the enemy players that are caught in its line of sight. Of course, you can fire the recon ball without bounces so it will stick to the first target it hits and start pulsing immediately, or you can add one or two bounces to it and that gives recon bolt a really high skill ceiling. Think about it, after you fire your arrow, it gives you the information about the enemies and allows you to make a play, or it gives you the potential information about where you can safely move to. Being able to gather so much information so fast is a huge boon that more people should definitely be mastering. Coming in at second place, let's talk about Raze's ultimate, the Showstopper. If you played in beta, you know how broken Raze was. You would see her in every game, and it was super annoying and frustrating to play against. Some people say that she doesn't even need a gun since her abilities do enormous amounts of damage. Luckily, they've nerfed her, and people stopped complaining, but we can't deny that she is still powerful, especially her ultimate. Showstopper is the big rocket that Raze gets after activating her ultimate, and as the name says, it can stop the show for enemies. 
If you want to get a fast kill or a cool Reddit highlight clip, this is the perfect ability for just that. This rocket has a potential to kill everyone standing in its way, and my advice for you guys is to always pay attention, and if you see that enemy Rays has her ultimate ready, separate from your team and get some information of her whereabouts because you probably don't want to rush into a site that she is defending. Imagine playing Rays on Bind and you're defending the A site. If you hear a few enemies in bathroom and you have your ultimate ready, it should be a pretty easy win since you can kill everyone that is there. Of course, if the enemies react in time, they can try to dodge it, but it's still such a powerful weapon that can win you around instantly. Now, the thing that we've all been waiting for, the number one spot, the best ability in the game right now, Sage's Resurrection. Yeah, you guys probably guessed this one, it wasn't that hard. The topic is arguable for sure, but no one can deny that Sage's Resurrection is the most valuable ability in the game. Currently the best healer in Valorant and pretty much the only one, she can even bring a fallen teammate right back to life. Her ultimate works this way. You just need to place your crosshair over an ally's corpse and left click it. After a brief channel, the ally will be brought back to life with full health and no shields. Do not be afraid to use your ultimate as Sage, but you also need to think about how you're going to use it because Resurrect is very important to find a perfect timing for and correctly decide who you're going to resurrect. If you have no other choice, well, you know, pick the safest and closest teammate. Sage's Resurrection can not only be useful for a numbers advantage over enemies, but it can also be really helpful if you want to play smart around your economy. If you won the round and you have a dead teammate near you, think about bringing them back to life just so they can grab a gun that's on the ground, and that will definitely help out with the economy of the team. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. As always, we would really appreciate your support, so be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below, and check our website ProGuys.com, where you can find some of the best coaches out there that can really help you improve. Also, hit the notification bell if you want to be alerted for upcoming videos, because we're always trying to deliver for you guys some of the best guides and most interesting topics about Valorant. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!